What would you do if you were convinced that the man you loved and the father of your children was up to no good? On today's case, Mrs. Naylor says she's quite sure her husband, Mr. Naylor, is not only up to no good, but he's actually bad at it. Mrs. Naylor says the secret conversations and late night texts can only mean one thing, that Mr. Naylor has been engaging in sneaky hookups behind her back. Is there hope for their marriage? Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Naylor versus Naylor. Thank you very much, Mrs. Naylor, Mr. Naylor. Mrs. Naylor, you say you no longer recognize the man your husband has become, making it impossible for you to stay in this marriage. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Naylor, you say your wife is constantly looking for problems, and instead of putting her energy into this divorce, she should be focusing on mending your marriage. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. and Mrs. Naylor, you have been married now for six years. You don't have children together, but Mrs. Naylor, you do have children from a previous relationship. You all have been building a family. Yes, Your Honor. Why are we in court today, ma'am? We in court today because I need help. Um, I feel that things are different. It's maybe cheating. I don't feel appreciated. But I love my husband. I love my husband. I got married to be married forever. And I just feel like I need help or maybe I might not be the correct woman for him. And if that's the case, then we will need to separate because I only want the best for him and me. Well, I think everybody deserves to have the love of their life and love in their life. So let's really establish what's been going on. Mr. Naylor, why do you think we're here today? My wife don't trust me. You know, I just feel like, you know, I go to work, I try to do everything I can for the family, and I just sometimes I feel like I'm unappreciated. I understand that. Why don't we go back? I always like to start back at a place where there was happy. How did you all meet? And then what brought us to this place? Mrs. Naylor, you begin. Okay, so we met, uh, we were originally from Detroit, Michigan. I sold cars. And so he was one of my customers at the dealership. And I helped him. Uh, great conversation. Very nice person from the start. Mm -hmm. uh, sold him a vehicle. But the next day, it didn't start. Yeah, you sold him a lemon. Yeah, I <laughs> sold him a lemon. Well, in Detroit, it gets cold, so sometimes it's the battery, mm -hmm. in which this case it was, and I made him feel secure that we would handle, you know, and get him on the road. Absolutely. So then he said, well, I want to take you out. I want to do something for you. And that led us to dating, falling in love with him instantly, just being a good man. I fell in love when I went to his house the first time, and on his table, he had all the books that Tupac had read. And so you thought to yourself, this is somebody that I'm going to be able to have a conversation with. This is a good God-fearing man that reads and haven't even been incarcerated. Interesting, interesting. Mr. Naylor, how long did you all date before it became serious? We were friends, I would say... We was never friends. That's the thing. I thought we was friends, you know, during this whole time. I, she looked at it as me courting her, but to me, I was just genuinely being a friend, and she was being a friend to me. We did stuff together. We go to the market. So it sounds like a mature relationship between the two of you. Yes. That yes. didn't rush right in to um, intimacy and no women all these was plans. always around from the beginning, though. Mm. Women was always around from the very beginning. <laughs> And I'm but not... you're here now. I'm here now. Yes, I so, am. So, how did it go from him being a good guy, um, approaching this as a mature relationship, to you suspecting that he's cheating? Give me, for instance. For instance, mm -hmm. I start answering my phone like this. I'm in a relationship. I didn't want no problems. Him, on the other end, he continued to talk to girls. Girls continued to call and text and ask for money and ask for loans and ask your family, can you get the money? And at first, it didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. So, but maybe I should have adjusted from the beginning because it was disrespectful. It wasn't a happy relationship. Like, I was happy to be with him, you know? I didn't want nobody disrespecting him, and I set the standard right Well, away. so here's my question. You're talking about women always being around. Are you suggesting that he was entertaining these women? Uh, like, they'll ask for job reference. 
I'm like, that's your mama. I'll give you a job reference. No, they want him to because it, let me have your phone number. Let me have your address. No, I'd rather you sing Michael Jackson. I want you back. Yes, I do now. Nah. That's how I feel. It's a game. So, Mr. Naylor, it yeah. seems like Mrs. Naylor, even before she became Mrs. Naylor, didn't like the fact that you had female friends and or miscellaneous relationships. What she's talking about is somebody who was a friend and it turned into, like, friends with, with... benefits, but this is before her. Way you before her? But, yeah, we was not dating when this was happening. Okay. But once I cut it off with the friend, she would continue to call every now and then, and because we was friends, I would, you know, speak to her. He didn't hey, cut how... it off. I wasn't friends with her no more. When, when did you cut it off with her? I Remember, cut it off with her before I even started talking to you. Honestly, I'm I cut sorry it to, off. I'm sorry to interrupt because one day I asked him, why are you still talking to her I'm not for talking 15 to her. minutes? And he said, I, I just didn't have the confidence to tell her or something. And then also, within a couple of days later, here come a new girl that won a reference. That was two different girls. And so, based on the fact that we just had a problem with a girl, when a new girl comes, that's supposed to have been, you haven't spoke to her in three years, but all of a sudden she called a day and she needed a reference. Why are we entertaining these girls? They usually need your boss to, to do a reference, not a coworker. Well, I was her team leader. So. Got it. So you were her boss for all practical purposes. You'd be the yeah. person that she'd ask for the reference professionally. Correct. So if this was someone who worked under his team and he was team leader, Tell me what the problem was, Mrs. Naylor. They were in a relationship on that team. So you, this is an ex, actual ex, another friend with benefits, is that correct? This is an actual ex. This is an actual ex. Yes. And was there any reason that you were in constant communication with her other than the reference? What I'm asking right. you is, staying late at work or not coming home, that make me believe, oh, are you guys doing something? This girl ain't been gone no three years, but instantly when I go... You know she I'll... was gone three years. You told me stuff that I didn't even know. Oh, that's what she told me. She said, I'm mad because she's beautiful. She said, where y'all getting married at? The backyard. So explain to me about this lack of intimacy. You know, just always starting it, engaging every night and nothing happened. I'm like, are you serious? When there uh, is a lack of intimacy, it's usually purposeful. I work real hard all day. You know, sometimes I want to just come home and lay down. Uh, Mr. Naylor, you do understand that you're in a marriage insecure about your relationship with Mr. Naylor? I don't know if I need a refresher just to know, should I stay? Should I go? Do you want to be married? Because I've never been a wife before. It's problems with sex. It's well, you, you, not... you have identified the different women who have called, but you've not identified anybody who you have any evidence that he has stepped outside of his marriage with. You don't have any evidence of that. I don't have any evidence Which of Which should make you feel good. It does make me okay, feel good. Okay, because nothing has come in here to suggest that Mr. Naylor has done anything wrong. Withholding sex and they call it. I I'm all frustrated. Well, you definitely are talking about withholding sex, and that's the second time you brought it up. Yeah. So explain to me about this lack of intimacy. So he told me, let's wait to have sex and get married. You know, he didn't want the same type of relationship where it was all about sex. I've heard, I've heard lots of people who make the decision to try to be celibate before try? marriage. Try? We already was having sex, good sex. And... And he just wanted to stop it and say, well, let's start back after we get married. So, um... <laughs> I would be like, okay, fine, because I, I, I think that's a good thing. I never met a man like that. That's fine. Oh, it... you mean to tell me now you're going through a period of celibacy again? Yes. Why? Because I said, you know, just always starting it, engaging every night, you know? So you're the one who is initiating sex. Yes, and then I said, okay, well, let me stop engaging and see what happens, and nothing happened. I'm like, are you serious? And now it's kind of going That's a little bit true, too far. That's not true. Well, listen, when there uh, is a lack of intimacy, it's usually purposeful. And in every relationship, I need you to know that there are what 
experts refer to as the core needs of every relationship. Okay. So it's emotional needs. Mm -hmm. That's the need to feel loved and valued, those kinds of things. There are physical needs, which is that intimacy. There's a spiritual need, there's a social need, and there's a security need. Yes. So those are core needs. Right. And if any one of them is missing, then you must address it as a couple. So I'm addressing it now. Why is the physical need not being met? I work real hard all day. It's a physically stressing job. So I have to carry and deliver some of my orders and I get tired. So I don't want to just, you know, sometimes I want to just come home and lay down and just relax. Uh, Mr. Naylor, you do understand that you're in a marriage. Yes. And again, I outline for you what are yeah. the necessary core needs but in a marriage. And if your wife is saying, how, how often do you have um, sex now? We're on 30 days now. I wanted to have sex before the show. Get on the show and be nice, have some good time, and, and be already working it out. Wanted to have sex last night. And no, no sex. Well, that was, oh my goodness. Emotionally and physically, you're not connected. What about spiritually? She don't support my religion. I try to stay away from unclean food. She'll bring unclean food in the house anyway. Like, for instance, shrimp. Not only is my religion, but I'm allergic to it. So well, that's she... bad. It's not sneaking. Actually, he feel it's disrespectful. I feel it's respectful. This okay. is my favorite food. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Yeah, Anna, can I say something? Yeah. Nah, I, w once I um, start asking for her for sex, she would go out of her way, send flirty messages. Oh, I'm gonna give you some tonight. It's gonna be tonight. Psych. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not funny to me, really. I'm like, I had my hopes up, and then you <laughs> did like that. So now nah, I'm like real hurt and disappointed. Like, so this is how you feel. You go, because I'm tired is the reason I didn't have sex, and you taking it and using it to be petty. And I oh, feel that's unfair. Yeah, that's, honor, that's, that's, that's I real thought unfair. I was going to get married and roll over and have some sex, coffee, and donuts. You know what I mean? Every night, I initiated sex with him. And then it was times when I really wanted to have sex with him, and then he'd sleep. But I'm just saying, I don't want to be the initiator all the time. Okay, Mr. Naylor, you heard what your wife said. You need to bring it behind home, take an energy drink, <laughs> take a shower, and get ready to rock. That's what you need to do. Okay, and I do want to do that, but, you know, it's just hard because... I don't want to have sex because I don't feel supported by her. See, there is, like there is, now we're getting to the real nitty gritty. There seems like there's some distance between you all. You're not meeting each other's core needs. What is happening? Emotionally and physically, you're not connected. What about spiritually? Can I ask why you feel like I don't support you? How, how I support That's you? That's the spiritual sex. part of it. That's support. Right. Yeah. Okay. Supporting a person is the spiritual part. Right. Okay. Well, I just feel like that because you you find a reason sometimes to start an argument, and then that's the reason sometimes I don't want to have sex. Like you would say something like, "I come home from work, and I gotta take care of my daughter. I pick her up from school. This is all stuff I do after work. We go on walks and everything. I don't have the right to be tired sometimes." I just feel like I don't want to always be the initiator. It kind of made me feel like I was not wanted. And now that he do want it, it kind of made me want to keep it a little bit more. Kind of, kind of exciting to get somebody <sighs> after you, kissing on you, asking you for sex. I'm not used to that. He ain't been doing that lately. So it made me want to not get So it none. sounds almost, Mrs. Naylor, to be honest with you, like you brought your husband here to divorce court for attention. It really does feel that way. And she don't support my religion, my new religion either. I'm glad you no. said that. So, so explain, to... excuse me, Mr. Naylor, tell me what you mean. I, you know, I believe in the Bible strongly. You know, I'm okay. a Hebrew. So I believe in the dietary laws and things of that nature. I try to stay away from unclean food and she'll bring unclean food in the house anyway. Like, for instance, shrimp. 
not only is my religion, but I'm allergic to it. So well, that's she, bad. Right. So now she won't cook it in the house now. She just go get it, sneak it, and bring it in the house. And she know I don't like it. And I just feel like that's just so disrespectful. And you know I don't like that. It's, it's not sneaking. Actually, he feel it's disrespectful. I feel it's respectful. This okay. is my favorite food. Is this something that you require of your wife? Because if she does not have the same spiritual beliefs, you all are not equally yoked. Is that a problem? <sighs> I was, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I would say it's not a problem. And it don't have to be. I mean, I love you no matter what. I just... I love know. you, too. And sometimes I just... This stuff started changing so fast for me. I changed my diet. I said, you got to love a man. Change your diet and go uh, out the house to eat your favorite food. And I respect you. I don't right. do it disrespectfully. That's why I don't... That's why I never forced you to be, like... I never forced it on you. Like, she saw me watching the programs, learning as I'm going to. Yeah, I and mean, now I have to turn it off when she come in or anything. He like, feels I just he won't turns even... it off. I don't make them turn it off. It's certain things that they say that and then I it don't causes like. an argument. Do you all know how short life is? <laughs> to find love, to find somebody you are compatible with, to find someone who treats you with dignity, that you want to raise children with, that you think you can put a home together with, mm -hmm. that is like the most precious gift. You know, and it could all be gone in a flash. Right. And the thought that you would argue over petty, insignificant things. Now, having a core spiritual belief is absolutely imperative. However, I don't believe that it's based in religion. I believe that it's based in relationship. And I think that if Mr. Naylor is sharing what his new relationship is with his God, you should be open to listening. And you don't have to share it, but you have to support it. And Mr. Naylor, yes. she can support you and your beliefs without embracing them as her own beliefs. Uh, you're right, you're right. That's the way two people who love each other negotiate. Mm -hmm. That's the way two people who say they want to be married come to a conclusion. You know, at any given moment, either one of you could be taken from this earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you want is to have wasted time on petty and insignificant things. Mr. Naylor, do you love Mrs. Naylor? With all my heart. With all my soul. Do you want this marriage to work? Yes. It's called compromise and communication. Can you do that, Mrs. Naylor? Compromise and communication. Yes, I'm trying to do that. Talk less, love more. And don't do tit for tat. Because you love him and you want him. And you take that energy drink. <laughs> and when you are fatigued... Okay. Put your arms around your wife. It's called compromise. You know how to do this. I'm trying for you. I just want you to try for me, too. And I will. I swear I will. That's why I'm here, Your Honor. Did you hear what your husband just yes, said? Yes, I heard you. I love Did you me. hear what he just said? What did I tell you? Talk less, love more. Listen to him. You asked him for something. He just said to you he was going to try. He's That's asked you for something. Can you try? Yes. That's all a relationship is, mm. communication and compromise. Right. You just did both. Now, rinse and repeat. Do it again. Again and again and again. And that's how you build a marriage. Put some structure in, honey. And don't let your man go. Don't push him away. And embrace your wife. You know, what does the Bible say, sir? When a man findeth a wife, he found it a good thing. I love you, baby. Can I give a hug? I love you too. Robert, they're gonna make it. I feel it in my heart and in my soul. So do I. You know, it turned out to be a game for her. Mm -hmm. And the game went bad. She was seeking attention. I think mm -hmm. that is actually why she brought the case. Right. Because she wanted him to pay attention. You know, I'd say all the time, the one universal truth here at Divorce Court is somebody wants to be heard. Right. She wanted to be heard. Perfect example. 
made in Georgia.